All right, we are live. Welcome back to another NFT 365 podcast episode. Uh, we are going to get started here in a minute. So just give me about one minute and we'll bring in our guest as well. Uh, so we are just pushing it to, we're, we're kind of keeping it a little bit simpler today. <laughs> we're, uh, we're only pushing it to, uh, to our Facebook group as well as YouTube. So we're uh, you know, streaming there. Uh, this first uh, interview will be uh, tomorrow's episode. And then we have another interview coming up uh, at 1130 Eastern time. Uh, and that'll be, I can't remember my days. That'll be, I think, Friday or Saturday's episode. So thanks, everybody, for jumping in. I see some of the team is in there. I know they're posting it in the Discord right now. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me, let me drop that. All right. Welcome back to another episode of NFT 365. And you know, the, the beauty of this podcast is that, you know, for me, as someone that, you know, definitely self identifies as, uh, you know, creatively challenged in many cases, where I, I never even thought of myself, even you know, I never was one that picked up a uh, a pen and paper or, you know, sketch things. I, I did a lot of sketching, but that was just my, my ADHD kicking in and, and keeping me a little bit busy. But one of the things that I kind of fell in love with over the last 10 years was really video and photography and, and from a extreme amateur perspective. And a lot of it had to do with my three little girls. And, you know, I'm one that, you know, if you looked at my, the numbers of photos that are on my phone, it's somewhere in like the 27,000s range. And I, I love getting creative with that. You know, I have a 360 camera. I enjoy kind of the creative side of how do we like kind of bring people in, give them access to what we're, we're all doing. And, and then ultimately being able to capture those moments, right? And I'm a big fan, of course, of sharing them out. And so I'm excited for this, uh, this episode because we're actually going to bring in some talent, some actually professionals in the space that are, are kind of in not only in doing some creative things uh, around, you know, photography and video and, and 360, but really kind of, you know, in my opinion, kind of standing out and really excited to see kind of more uh, opportunities like this to jump in to the actual NFT space. So very excited to have you guys here today. Thanks so much for, for joining me. I, I know we, we kind of connected via Instagram and we were you know, going back and forth. But Eric and Kim, welcome to the podcast. Go ahead and introduce yourselves to the audience. Let them uh, know a little bit about you guys. Good morning, Fenzo. <laughs> Good to be on your podcast. Uh, we've been fan for a long time. Uh, that's Kim Henry. I'm Eric Paris. So we're a duo of dancer and photographer. We've been traveling together and creating art for over eight years now. Yeah, I'm the dancer, she's the <laughs> photographer. <laughs> well, For those that are listening in the audio part, they're gonna be like, wait, wait, did I see that? <laughs> I, I like that, I like that that report back and forth. How did you guys first connect from dancer photographer? How did that story of, of those two worlds kind of collide? Um, I was working uh, in 360, um, started to work with, just trying to uh, learn photography and so playing with my friends and then started to work with some dancers and I figured out that it was uh, easier for me to work with dancers because I'm not good at um, directing. <laughs> and and um, so Kim uh, is a dancer from Montreal and I uh, simply connected with her and we started to, to work together. and. She kind of um, changed everything for me because she was so good at uh, the specific project I was working on, which involved uh, 24 cameras, long exposure, and very precise movements. And she was so good that um, I asked her, like a year later, I asked her, can, you, can we work again together? And that was the beginning of something huge because that was like eight or nine years yeah. ago. And we've been working together since then. So. Uh, hundreds of thousands of images, uh, 20 over 20 countries traveled together. And yeah, so, so we, we do all of our creative projects uh, as, a, as a duo. Yeah, so it happens that our respective backgrounds and also like expertise kind of complement each other for, and by combining those, we realized that we were creating something that was, a, a, well, a collaboration that was pretty unique. So, and we've been, 
fascinated by the process ever since. So, I mean, I think that's the part that jumps that jumped out at me originally, just from the standpoint of you know seeing it from like the outside in, and I was like, wow, that's not something like I wouldn't see like the duo of, of dancer and photographer. And I mentioned my love for uh, photography. I'm actually traveling to VCon tomorrow, but I'm only going for two days because both of my daughters have dance recitals here on Saturday, and I promised them that I would not miss that. It's also my middle daughter's birthday uh, the following day. And so I have a, there's a, there's some connection there. And, and, you know, I love, I love the, like kind of that collaboration and worlds colliding, but how did you know, like when you first started, like, Hey, we're going to start to travel together. How did you look at it from like, what was the product or how you were going to kind of present this? Cause I think, for a lot of people, when we think of NFT space, we think of like the creatives being kind of siloed, right? You have you have a dancer that might have photos, but not you know, be working exclusively with a photographer and, and kind of the same piece of there. How did that initially kind of bring together as like, hey, this is something we can provide that's rather unique? Yeah, well, this is way before NFTs yeah, so for right, the recurs. Yeah. That is like eight years ago. And so we were working in, in a very small studio with 24 cameras. And we uh, we came up with that technique of one second light painting. So very short, long exposure. Uh, if you look at the definition of uh, light painting on Wikipedia, it's one second or more. And I was doing about one second, sometimes even less. So it was was something a, a bit different back then, but it was only in the studio. And we worked together like for a, a few months, uh, very like uh, making the, the technique better, improving our our images. And then at the end of this project, we're like, okay, what's the biggest circle we could do? Because it was a small circle. And the answer was to travel, like to do a full uh, round trip around the world. And so that was kind of the opposite. So we went from, a, small tiny black studio to traveling outdoors in empty spaces very bright in deserts and that kind of complemented our our style in the studio but over the the years we also wanted to bring our long exposure work outdoors and that was quite a challenge we tried so many things that didn't work until in 2015 we found out these uh these long uh tubes so it's just a plastic tube and that changed the, the story for us because then we start to to go viral on, on many places and get more brand deals. So uh, that really became a, a business. Uh, we're now uh, eight people in the team doing uh, multi-camera work, making the, these tubes, teaching what what we do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Maybe I would add. Um... I, I like to think of what we do as kind of a spider web, like because we, we have many different things that actually complement each other when we look at it from a different perspective, uh, because we have like the studio work in 360, then we have the dance photography that is outdoors and desert and empty spaces. We have the like our uh, night reflection series, which is our tube light painting work uh, that combines the two. And so, and the light painting indoors. And I think that one of the things that um, kind of links everything together is the, um, I'll say like the performing aspect of it uh, in the process that we both share. So I'm a, I'm a dancer, so I, I'm a performer and that's how I approach uh, my, uh, my input uh, of our duo. But Eric, when he, when he does light painting, he actually dances with the light. That's what I say. <laughs> and, I, and I'm not behind the camera. That, that's, uh, that's changing like the usual workflow for a photographer. Like I'm, I, I do my setting on the camera and then I go in the frame. So in most of my images, I am in the frame, even if you don't see me because I'm crafting the light by hand. Now, is there, is there a, I mean, for, I'm going to put the links in the, in the bio and I would actually, I don't really recommend this ever in a podcast, but like for, for those that are listening and you're not driving or like on a treadmill, I would I would hit the pause button on the podcast. I know it's kind of a weird requirement here. Click on the link and just look at what we're they're kind of talking about here, because to me, it is I mean, it is stunning. It, you know, as you kind of mentioned, it, you know, it tells a story and it, I mean, it really brings you into this like amazing world. Yet it still also has a very beautiful like simplicity to it. Uh, what is like is what is like when you, when I guess how would you explain that to I guess both on both sides of this I'm curious how do you explain it from a standpoint of what what type of like kind of uh, creative this is as a whole and then for those that are kind of you said you're you're training people 
like who are the are, are you have like the people that are coming together saying we have a a combo a combination of people or is it like photographers wanting to create this style uh, of um, output like how do what do, how do you kind of explain exactly it is the the creative that you have because it is it is stunning and really unique well it's, i think it's simple when people see that they think it's photoshop until they realize it's not photoshop and then they want to learn the technique uh, and when we found out about these long tubes, we're like, oh, that's that's something that is accessible. It's not expensive. It's easy if you already have a camera. You don't need much. So um, when we found that, we decided right away, okay, we're going to show everything. We're going to teach the technique uh, because we were already teaching other things anyway. So it felt just natural. And over the years, we grew up a community of 20,000 people. We never had any paid content online about our, our work. We give everything for free. Of course, some of the uh, workshops on, on the road, like in, in locations, uh, can be uh, a, a bit different. Like people have to subscribe to, to that. But everything that is online has always been free. It's always going to stay free. We don't have uh, any membership for that. But what's great about that is that so many people picked up the, the technique that it, it grew bigger than, than what we were we would do by ourselves. So many of these people found different techniques that we're using today. So we're kind of uh, growing together. It's so cool. Yeah, because... So, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead Kim. Yeah, I think that since we've been sharing everything uh, we were discovering while we were discovering it, because it's been like evolving for the past few years, but since we shared everything from day one, I think it also encouraged people from the community to do the same. So it became kind of a, a big group of people wanting to, um, wanting to actually participate to the evolution of the technique, which is super um, exciting for everyone involved. But so yeah, it's a you, mentioned, you mentioned like you're kind of innovating with the the tubes. You also mentioned you know the trout the trip around the world. I I've done that trip around the world twice uh, myself uh, in a past life with uh, cybersecurity world that I was in. But it sounds like you're you both have been naturally willing a to come together with a unique pair, but then also innovate, roll with where you know kind of kind of explore and expand different ways. What do you what do you think kind of like you know drives that because. I think ultimately it's that's the beauty of what NFT unlocks for a lot of people. But it sounds like you unlocked it probably even before digital and and social kind of uh, you know came into the full time here for your you know for a lot of like the brand deals and and that work. So how how do you guys kind of think about it from the standpoint of just you know exploring and taking these risks? Well, for me, I, I couldn't have a nine to five job. It just didn't work. I, I was not made for that. So it just felt natural to do my own thing. It's been like that since the beginning. So first I was a, a photographer, I was like doing regular photography. That was not enough. I felt like I was not bringing anything new to the, to the market until I found these uh, 360 things and, and, uh, and long exposure. So then I, I really felt like I had my thing. So it's, this is what's driving me every day. It was just to keep innovating, creating more. And that's, that's, the, that's the business that, that we, we built. The business, the passion, everything goes, goes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think we're both very curious. We both have a strong sense, uh, like a strong need for exploration and we're very playful people, which, which means that I think that takes a big play, a big part into like how we approach uh, the light painting explorations and work um, creation that we do. We both love nature and also what the, the type of, um, I'll say the type of lifestyle as well, it kind of creates because we are outdoors a lot. We walk a lot, a lot of lonely time uh, in nature. So all that kind of feeds um well, the experience and therefore the art. She's very poetic, but I'm very simple and basic. So we always talk about how we can improve our work, like the different yeah. ways of working and eating. So what are we going to eat tonight? That's that's about it for me. But she's she's good at like we enjoy the good things in life. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, it sounds like it. And I, I mean, and when you said the word playful, you know, that comes out in every one of the images when, you know, and it feels like, you know, there's like a beauty of the art, but there's also something, you know, that I feel like, you know, and I'm not, you know, I, it's definitely in the eye of beholder side of this uh, conversation, but I, I, I just feel like there's something really just, you know, powerful that kind of jumps off. And, 
you know, we are recording this live and a couple of people are, are mentioning like, are those lightsabers, right? Because you have the lights. So I'm sure that's not the first time you've heard uh, someone asking if those are, are lightsabers. But I, I'm curious from a, you know, if, uh, you know, Kim, from a dancer's perspective, you know, the, the creative freedom, the, you know, exploration of like the craft, how much are you, are you, are you, a, were you a perfectionist style prior? How does that kind of combination work? Just in, in my experience with dancers, I was curious how that kind of uh, works together. Uh, that's an interesting question. I think that, um, yeah, I come from a background more like athletic um, and I was both um, very fascinated by the like very physical aspect of crafting the, the body as an instrument and understanding and being able to um, be really flexible with, with, with it. Um, but also like I've done a lot of performance outdoors working on very minimalistic, um, shows and, uh, working on presents and stuff like that. So, and I think, uh, for light painting, uh, I basically need to stay still, which is kind of counterintuitive for a dancer. Right. right. <laughs> so it's a different type of challenge, like physical challenge. Um, but I think my desire for precision and having like bringing, um, I'll say like life and presence into a still body per se is, is something that is infused in the work and actually necessary in the work we, we do together. So yes, I, I used that. to be a perfect perfectionist. <laughs> now I'm kind of working on that. <laughs> and, and you know, and I think that's like you know adapting. And I also love Eric. You mentioned you know not all you're not you're you're setting up the camera and then you're also in the shot, kind of making the shot come together. Is that a a a common aspect of in this space? Like to me, like I didn't realize that or, uh, at first until I had done just a little reading, and I was like, oh, like that that's such a change. It changed even my perspective of how. The, the creative comes together. And like, in a way, like the reason for me, a lot of these questions are really powerful is that when we think about it in the NFT space, a lot of things are just taken for what they are, especially, you know, one of one art. And I think with what you, what you both kind of create, it tells a story without even needing motion. It has motion that yet it's still, it's playful yet, you know, elegant. And there's like something beautiful about that. But even just the fact that you're not behind the camera, I think adds a layer is how did that, like, how did you first kind of come up with that idea of like kind of, kind of getting involved in that side? How did that kind of come to life? Well, by accident, probably just by constraint. All of my life is based on constraints. So um, when I started in 360, my studio was so small and I was used to uh, play with uh, strobes, like, you know, like the big photographer's lights. Uh, but my studio was too small. And by doing this, I was revealing all of the cameras all around. So think about a 10 feet uh, diameter uh, structure with cameras on it. So if you start to light up uh, like with big strobes and soft boxes, you reveal everything. So I needed a very concentrated light around my subject. So I tried to do something with a flashlight very close to my subject to light it up. And that worked super well. Uh, it was not beautiful at the beginning, but I kept doing it for a few months until I really found something. And I was like, oh, I'm into something that might be huge. So I, I went to make the, like, the first video in 360 using uh, light painting. And that, that went viral right away. So it helped me to really get started. But, but that's the reason why I was in the frame is because I, of, the, of that constraint of being in that small studio. But when I brought that outdoors, it was even more interesting because it was very physical. Because, you know, we were shooting in sand dunes also. And in sand dunes, I'm not doing a straight line from the camera to Kim. I have to make a huge loop so I don't leave any footprints. So uh -huh. it's, it's, a, it's, wow. a, it's a workout for me. It's a, I, I, there's a thrilling moment during the blue hour because when we shoot at the blue hour, it lasts just for a few minutes. And... I have to be super quick changing the settings, uh, making sure my, my shapes are perfect, my alignment is good. Uh, it, it's so fun. You have to try that. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I mean, I love all of that, right? I think, and like this, this whole, I mean, just the, I mean, it, it shows through in just the, the amount that like, what, how the, the uh, art stands out. But, you know, and I think there's also something just beautiful about like all these different things that sometimes, you know, from the surface, we don't recognize, right? And then, and you, you mentioned you have a, you have a, a team now, you've, you know, monetized it with like brand deals, you're doing all of those things. 
I'm curious. So this is a you know actually yesterday's episode for those that are listening. Um, I dove into like that idea of I'm I'm really struggling right now in two worlds where we have talented, amazing creators that have figured out how to monetize that are getting into Web three and NFTs, and then we have people that are kind of Web three enthusiasts that are trying to launch a project to have a creative or art you know kind of component, and they've never probably monetized as a creator. They've never thought of themselves in that realm uh, naturally. You're coming at it from that first spot where you were kind of building your business and your brand around that. Can you talk a little bit about how you kind of, you know, do, you know, look at brand deals or monetization and then how did that lead into NFTs and, and kind of even, you know, for a little bit of context, uh, Eric had, had uh, tagged me a couple of times in the podcast, uh, you know, supporting the podcast and it, you know, my Instagram DMs are ridiculous, but it, the account's verified. So it like shows up in a, in a different feed and I clicked on it and I remember, I mean, I probably lost 30 minutes that day right then. I was just in your feed stalking all of, all of the, the art and that's where the dialogue started. And I was like, I would love to have you on the show. So just for a little context out there, but yeah, talk to us a little bit about the creative monetization pre web three and kind of how that kind of looks into NFTs in this space now. Okay, so pre-Web3, for me, it's very simple. It's getting our work seen on internet. So that is in blog posts. I used to um, to share my work with the, the biggest uh, photography blogs, and that used to work. Now they're kind of dying. So uh, Instagram has, uh, used to be very, very good uh, because once uh, uh, an ag ag agency sees our work, then they can propose projects to their uh, the brands they're working with. And so we shifted to TikTok, uh, which was kind of natural for me to, to make content over there. So I grew up very quickly my, my TikTok account. And going through to, to Web3, um, I think, okay, and I tweeted about that a few months ago, I think that the future is brands buying NFTs instead of having those brand deals that I've been coming for, for so long. So I can really imagine a brand like Canon buying NFTs from their photographers using their equipment as a, um, a, a way to demonstrate they are part of this economy. They are encouraging their photographers without having all of the complicated paperwork and yep. You know, so, yeah, so I, I really think that this is where this is going. But in the meantime, we're currently uh, here. Uh, the shift for us was to go back to Twitter. Uh, we've been on Twitter for so long, but for other reasons. But when we learned that it was the place, okay, we decided to really dive into this and, and it's fun. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful community. Twitter is not what we, it was uh, for us in in like in the other uh yeah it's definitely not, not the same 2015 twitter that no <laughs> you'll remember and no, I, so i've been on there full time just because of my work that i've been mm -hmm, doing yeah, and I, yeah. it's kind of fun because i've seen people leave and now they come back and it's like mm -hmm. welcome back because it is a, it's a different i mean nft community is uh, i mean really i think the creative community as a whole now on on twitter has really found their well at the moment, we'll see what Elon Musk does or or doesn't or doesn't <laughs> yeah. do uh, in the near future. You know, I wanted so you mentioned you know kind of the the brand deals. I'm getting the brand NFT side, but I'm curious from like as a you know one of the things that I say and, and I and I like to say it, but I want to I want to hear your take as uh, you know two amazing creatives that have been you know kind of you know putting not only your work and your life out there. When I think about it from saying like, how do we remove the starving from the starving artist? Or how do we allow a creative to just do what they love, which is the creative part? You both are kind of a little bit unique in that sense because you have so much production and light and there's a lot of those pieces. But you know, I liked when you said like our web two approach was more of like, we just need to get it seen and then things come to us, which I think is a benefit of your creative talents, right? Not everyone has that like luxury of like, hey, if they see my art, they're going to recognize that it's worth the collaboration. I'm curious from, do you look at Web3, I guess this is the, do you look at Web3 as an opportunity for you to have to do less work and around the like monetization marketing or more? Okay. I was, I was afraid <laughs> this is where we're going. So, no, yeah, I'd love so to hear your take hard. on that. Because I will tell you, when I first started thinking of this from, you know, bringing you on the show and we were talking I mean, the use cases for me popped. I mean, I, I mean, you're you're training and teaching people. You have the physical product with the you know the lights. You, I mean, like the idea of not only 
you know, putting your art out as NFTs, but memberships and the opportunity even for coins, for people to use coins to be able to, you know, participate and, and learn or go behind the scenes. I mean, I mean, for me, as soon as you, you know, when I was on your TikTok, I was like, I mean, this is the access that people would crave, but they want to be able to have kind of like back and forth. But yeah, so like that question of like when we, so if you're looking at Web3 is probably more work. How are you looking at it for maybe expanding the things you love? Because I, I, I don't see either of you as driven by, by money, more of like just the, the life and the, you putting your work out there. So talk to us a little bit about that. Well, we need the money to pay yeah. our plane tickets, okay? So, That's and true. To pay, very to true. pay the rent, to pay the employees. I mean, it's part, it's part of it. Uh, so we, we can talk about that. It, it's normal. Yes, we, we love uh, what we do. We're, we're lucky that we can do what, uh, uh, what we enjoy and being paid for it. But uh, into when we uh, come into NFTs, like it's uh, it's different. It's a lot of work of communicating communicating uh, what we do, and it feels like we're starting from scratch. Uh, everything that we've built for so long. I remember we had a call with a, one of our first collectors uh, when we we're still early in the space, and he said, "You have to build a community. That's super important." And we're like, "We've been doing that for eight years. It's just that it's not the same people." <laughs> So, yeah, it's such a lot, a lot of work to, to start from scratch, but that, that's part of it. And we're, we're having fun. So uh, things are not growing as fast on Twitter as we can have uh, on TikTok. I mean, TikTok is like you just, you just post uh, cool content and you, you, your things are exploding. But on Twitter, you really have to, to be nearly full time to, just to have a, a small impact. But so far, it's work. We, we sold over 75 uh, one of one NFTs. And um, yeah, slowly we're we're getting there. So um, and and we decided to take our work from the past uh, eight years, these uh, light uh, light painting images uh, that we uh, created into a series of uh, 108 images. Uh, my, my inspiration when I started back in September, because I was looking at the uh, what what was there. Uh, inspiration was uh, just in Versano with the twin flames. And the row homes, both were collections of about 100 oh. images. And I was like, oh, this, this is interesting because it's not just you, uh, it's not just about um, minting your images, having your first characters, but they have secondary sales and, and big ones. And that was super inspiring for me. So trying to get there. And, and I guess like second, I mean, from a standpoint of pre-Web3, what relationship did you have with like a secondary sale of your, was there any kind of connection between someone you know, kind of take, were you getting, there's, was there a way that you were getting a percentage if someone was reselling something that they were either purchasing or even a brand deal that someone wanted to extend? Was that something as part of your deal before? Not that much because we never sold any prints, but yes, sometimes we, like we did a gig for uh, Audi Canada and then Audi USA, one of the same images. So, and that was 10X. So, so similar to what we see in secondary sales, but not very common. And that's a whole different way of thinking mm -hmm. with uh, NFTs. And do you see that as a, do you, I mean, because it's going to be, I mean, the more work thing, you, you were both, you know, smiling and laughing at that, you know, Web3 as it, you know, because it unlocks. But, you know, part of it also is, you know, I look at what you are providing as like, I mean, there's a one of one component, but I'm sure you're exploring even what does that mean beyond one of one, right? The ability to take even some of these amazing setups and having, you know, small variations of them that could be, you know, a collection I'm just curious from the standpoint of like, you know, you mentioned building the community part and like, this is a little bit of like a, a balance for me. Like I would love to be like, Hey, let the, like the marketers or the, the technologists, like let, let's let us build some amazing communities and then let's bring in some amazing talents. I know like uh, time magazine does a great job with that right now with their NFT collection, bringing in artists, um, playboy uh, avatars. They do that really well where they'll even buy a bunch of one of ones and airdrop them to their community. And it's such a great way of that collaboration. Uh, so I'm, you know, you have the one of one collections, you have them up on a couple different sides. You mentioned like September, you were inspired, you had someone that you were kind of looking at. From that point forward, how did like the first, like what was like the first experience of putting an NFT online? Like, was that different than what you kind of had felt with, because you were already you know, not doing print, right? You were already doing digital, you know, native um, artwork. 
is that was it different kind of thinking okay well now this is going to live in a nft form or how did you kind of walk through that kind of process yeah we've been lucky at, at the beginning uh we worked with uh, ev from sloika that's the guy who started 500 px a long time ago that, that used to be the biggest uh photography sharing website yeah but sloika what he's building now is really solid and he, he was very uh strong opinionated about having our own smart contract at the beginning it was like a I don't know. I don't. I don't understand these things. But it was very like uh, it was important for him, and and he helped us to to mint our first images on his platform. I think we were the second artist uh, minting on Sreka when it was uh, very early back then. And now they have hundreds of photographers, but we were there at the very beginning with our own smart contract because what we usually see is photographers they, they jump in very quickly the the uh, mint on uh, open sea with the shared contract and then they're kind of stuck with it so we're very lucky we have our own smart contracts and it was a good experience because they helped us uh the team from Sorica, they helped us to to get uh, onboarded and of course we're helping others because we learn from from that but yeah the, the first uh our first experience was really good we minted nine images and uh we sold out within a week and uh so we dropped 12 collections total and some of them have been sold out in 13 minutes and some uh, are not. Uh, it's, it, it's been a bit slower during the past months, the past three months. Uh, so we have three collections of nine images that are not sold out, but working on it slowly. And we'll, yeah, and we'll definitely include those links uh, in, the, in the show notes. You know, I'm curious, you mentioned the community that you had built My, was not really the same community that A was on Twitter, but that's here. I think from like the outside in or maybe the photographer that is the non, you know, digital first photographer, they're like, wait a second, you were building already a social media presence. You were building a digital audience. I'm curious, like, what do you think the, like the barrier is or how does, how does like when you're saying like, Hey, this is an NFT, how does that come across differently for your existing audience that you had built prior? And then maybe the new web three native, how, how are they kind of receiving that? And maybe what's like the barrier that you believe to kind of bridge those two worlds? I think you know the answer, <laughs> but yeah, so we have a Facebook group. This is where we, we teach everything, 20,000 people. And uh, yeah, I mentioned NFTs about two months ago and yeah, it didn't go very well. <laughs> so I got kind of hate message. Oh, I'm leaving the group, uh, blah, blah. And, uh, but things are changing uh, slowly and, um, I'm still using the group just to, to, to teach our stuff, but eventually I want to find a way to bring those who are interested because I received so many messages from those people. They want to get started. They don't know how to start. Um, so it's a lot of time for me to, to, to help them to get started, but I want to, to do it, but in a kind of another group probably, because I don't want to um, mess too much with this group that is more here for, to learn about the technique, but slowly it's going to get there because we know we're, we're all going to have a MetaMask account in a few months. We're all going to be part of this new economy. It's just a matter of time. So until then we're getting, uh, prepared, uh, to, to get them on board. And some of them are very good artists and I want them to, actually, I want to buy their NFTs. I want to buy their art. So we have a few artists that we, like, we know we want to take by the hand and then we're going to, to purchase some of, some of their art because it's so beautiful. And, and no one sees that because yeah. it's just a, a small, small group. Or... Yeah. And teaching has been part of what we do, like of our journey since the beginning. So at this point, like we know and we're actively thinking about ways to like merge um, those things, like to bring also that aspect into like our Web3 presence. And, um, but it's, I guess it, we're very busy. <laughs> it, so we're prioritizing, but we're, yeah, it's brewing. It's brewing. And I, and I think, you know, that's, there's such an interesting piece of this too, right? Because I think, you know, part of this also is like that digital ownership. And we say that, like, I put air quotes a little bit in the you know digital ownership because like I will say like for me looking at what you create and the fact that I can own one of those and then I can display it even like for me it would be the display on the on the TV that I don't even really watch it these days because I live in Twitter spaces and and creating this podcast but like being able to show that off and I, I will say like you know, my my daughters were here this weekend and we were going through the episode and I happened to just have uh, the Instagram open and like the first like watching my daughter's eyes just like light up. And, and I will say, Kim, she was like, and this wasn't my dancer. This was, this is the one that would no, has no interest in dance. She's the, my, the soccer player. She was, she was, she was like, daddy, you get to work with like 
those type of because they look at me as like the tech geek like that that's like i get on stages and talk but i was I, like that idea of like owning it and putting it on display right i think that is such a a powerful piece and you mentioned you haven't really done prints before so in a way like you're entering a whole new world where you're going to be able to you know give people the ability to display these in their houses and from an ownership perspective i'm curious like is is that like a is that like maybe the use case that helps some of the photographers or some of the those that are in this space even from the the dancer collaboration because i think you both i mean i i you're natural teachers because you also took a unique use case to come together, collaborate, you know, build this many, many years ago before this was a, a case. And I would argue right now, like we need, we need to learn from you, both of you on saying like, what was the way that you brought two strong creatives that have two of their own very talents and you were able to merge them in a way that like creates, you know, a singular output. That's a very hard thing for a lot of NFT. I think, you know, founders where it's like, I want to bring in an artist. I want to bring in a dev. I want to bring, but then like, how do I make sure that the, that these worlds are working together? What would your like advice or thoughts be on like how you've been able to work together as creatives to push forward, but also let both of yourselves, you know, shine pun intended. Wow. That's, that's a good question. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I guess I've, well, you know, we both believe in like the strength, the strength of collaborations and, with, I firmly think that if we bring the best of what we do and what we know and what we master together, it can just be better. So I guess that we are fo focusing on um, what are our common um, interests and what our common passions and pushing in that direction. And sometimes like we do a lot of ping pongs um, with ideas and, and, and things sometimes, and we, we try stuff and obviously it doesn't work and but so i don't know i like, think I, I would i mean from like my side i'm like who says who's the final say that says that was good enough or that was where that is finished right because you have both of you are 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 part of it together i like that even just that idea of like how do you come to a you know i mean i brought a lot of creatives together before and to get them to agree on something that is quote unquote finished or or good enough uh you know from a perfection perspective could take a long time so even like even that how do you guys kind of work through that that part of it kind of like coming together at the end to say hey this is what we believe like our vision or, or the view looks like well we both have our things so for me it, like the shape has to be perfect uh the the lightning the, like the technical stuff she's looking at her pose and small details that I don't even see. So we talk about these things. We uh, we define like what's uh, what's going to be a part of a final collection. Um, so um, and like, over the years, like kind of know, but sometimes she surprises me. Like, oh, my feet there is not right. I was, I'm like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So I guess we we trust. Uh, we have trust in each other's like uh, opinions and. Um, so if he says like no that doesn't work well i we easily let go and move on so we just uh, we trust the process as well like um and once both of us are satisfied with a piece then i guess that's the cue for it to to say it's good yeah. enough <laughs> I, I like that i mean trust the process right i think that's such a yeah. beautiful aspect of it right and you love the process right i can tell like that part of it too like the the all of it is part of the you know the end product it really isn't just the end product it's all of the things that you've you know led up to all of that I, i'm curious you know from the you know, right now definitely web3 is going to be more work but you also mentioned like you see it where brand deals rather than them saying hey we're going to pay you this much and you know we want want you to create this many for this project they can buy you know an nft and maybe the nft is the art or maybe the nft is a number of your uh you know hey we're going to we can hire you for 3 you know of these to be produced you know where it's at or where whatever that may be do you see that quickly becoming the fact that like your traditional pipeline of of work just kind of disappears as like as the as the nfts fall on or do you see it being kind of the two kind of walking together for a good while no it's two very different things and i think it's going to continue like this for a while because when we get hired by a brand to to participate in a, a commercial like an ad for the tv like there's no relation with nfts and uh, that they need a specific piece of content for for their for their ad so that's going to stay like this but in other cases where they they have a, an event 
and they want to uh, to put some NFTs on, on, on sale. So they buy them and they, uh, they're they going to uh, uh, have a contest or to give them or or whatever, like just to, to show that that they, they are part of this economy. That's very separate. So I don't I don't think uh, we are going to move into Web3. And I don't think we're even talking about Web3 in a, right. in a few years because it's just going to be part of what we do. It's just called online life, right? Like we know when no. we you know, Web1 to Web2, Web2 came and then we forgot that Web2 was even a thing until all of a sudden someone said three is coming. Yeah, like, oh, we, yeah must, right. we must be in two because I forgot that we even entered two. And uh, I, I'm curious from, you know, now that you're, you've been on the inside, there's kind of like two things that jumped out at me originally when I was excited to bring you on. And I love like bringing this whole story, but there's also the part of like, how do you decide what you're minting them from like a price perspective? Like, how are you approaching that? Are you looking at other artists, you know, um, you know, I you know, also even other ways to bring collections to life um, with Drift, you know, Drift Shooter and his uh, collection. Recently, we added that to uh, our PFP uh, collect or our Mint 365 collection. And I, I found that was very interesting on even what he was pricing the minting. And rather than doing a limited collection, he did a limited time collection where, you know, it was only available to buy. How did you guys walk through like that decision? And is it something that's still evolving? So I know a lot of people are listening and, and inspired, but they're, they're going to do that. They're going to sit there and be like, well, how do I even know what this collection should be worth? So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah, so we're very aware of the market. We look at what's happening. We look at uh, pretty much uh, all photographers in the industry. We look at what, like what pricing, what platform, and how do we see ourselves in, in this? It's just trial and error because what's the value of an image? Who knows? It depends. So when we started, um, it was just a guess, and it, it worked. So we continued, and we knew that we would have... Uh, about 100 pictures so we had to, to keep a price that was low enough to eventually have secondary cells because uh everything on foundation or super rare is usually just sitting there which is it's it's okay too like people are making a, a sale and uh characters are going to keep uh, that for a while i want to go the uh, the other way with uh, a lot of secondary cells so it was making sense to have more images and editions was not a thing back uh, back then. So now it's very popular, right. but we're not going there because we really want to focus on that single collection. Uh, it's going to be sold out soon, and then we're going to keep creating to improve the, the these things, uh, create more behind the scenes. Uh, we still have to dig into the archives for for videos of how we created each of these images. So I think we're thirty percent done on the because we made a website with. All of the images and behind the scenes stuff, but we're about 30% done with the uh, the process of the, the creation of each of them. So we just keep going to build on this um, on this collection. So the next step for us is to to make a, a poster. So we designed a super beautiful poster and the collector number five. There's there are a lot of tricks. Uh, like uh, there's a roadmap that we we made for our collectors. So if you own number five of uh, of a series, then you get the poster. So we would like to play this NFT game and and have this roadmap. But we're going to continue to to invest in this uh, in this collection because if we start uh, minting other things, then what's going to happen with the the initial collection? And that's a great question I had for you. Like, what do you think about photographers that are releasing uh, collections of like 15 images on OpenSea? Sold out. Move to the next one. Sold out. Move to the next one. But nothing's going to happen on the previous one, which is probably fine because characters are here for for the art. We know that. But what's what's going to happen in the future with this? Do you have a, any yeah. opinion about that? I mean, I I mean, I love that you brought in like the different aspects that you're adding, kind of like utility within. You're not having to like reinvent utility in a way. You're adding like with a you know, if you happen to mint the the fifth one, you have an, you know an extra you know addition to it. You know, I think one of the things that you know, and this actually kind of falls into the you know, the curiosity side of you know, of what, like what kind of control or things do you want to be able to explore, right? We, we also know like things like burning, being able to burn one that someone has in a collection because it might be able to unlock, you know, they, they might get the first pick in the next collection that you have, right? So then you're able to kind of like shrink your original supply to those that love the one they have and then kind of allow them into like, you know, a newer collection. But I mean, I would argue what you are doing now is kind of, I think where we're going to continue to see some of the innovation. I love that you, recognize and approach the, hey, are we going to try to 
have, you know, are we going to have to hustle to get our nine sold at a very high price point that might take months, year um, to sell? Or are we going to try to get a, a, an entry point that might encourage secondary sales that we get are getting that percentage, but we're also getting it in more hands? I would argue, I look at a lot of the one of ones and I think they're missing out by not allowing secondary sales to be some of the marketing and sales, especially for the Web3 world. Because I will tell you, as soon as, you know, my, I know people are looking at my wallet on a regular basis. And as soon as I started, you know, mint, if I minted a, a one of one, it opens the door where people are running to be like, okay, I'm going to go find that. But if it's at a price point that I'm only going to buy one one of one for a whole year, I'm not kind of being that vehicle, you know, um, on top of it. And then the other piece of it, and this kind of goes into the question I was thinking about asking, what is your thoughts on like, the role, because like right now we have the PFP are, you know, uh, NFTs, and then we kind of have the one of ones, you know, and we know there's a lot of other things that play in and, and you're on Ethereum uh, for your collection as well. But from a standpoint of like those worlds coming together or even at, like, are you a collector of PFP projects? And then do you see, like, I'm looking at selfishly at our project and part of it is. I don't want just an, uh, another animal project, not anything against animal projects, but like, I mean, monkey is my favorite animal and, and we've had way too many monkey projects. Uh, we had too many monkey projects six months ago, but I'm curious, like from a, from what you, what you're creating, I believe there's so much like you, you have like, what your style presents beautifully in a, in not only as a solo, you know, PFP collection, but it may be even in a collaboration element. What are, what are you, what excites you about some of the PFP collections that you're collecting? And what are you, what are your thoughts on kind of how you can even innovate into that space? Well, it's the reference because we've been investing in PFPs uh, since October probably. Yeah. And we learned so much from that. And so I really wanted to, to have our, our work being flipped like this. And at some point it was like, oh, I didn't realize that it was not a thing. Like flip shaming is a thing. You right. cannot ask people to flip your images. It's bad. Until it's not going to be, I think it's going to change at some point because why are we putting so much value on those uh, small monkey images? Uh, can we do this with art? Why not? Right. <laughs> and But we had to start slowly to get there. PFP projects are going to start at 0 0.03 and then secondary sales 0 0.06 and up and up and up. So our first, uh, one of our first collector who put on secondary, he put it at five Ethereum, something that he bought at 0.25. And so we started to talk. So, you know, it's, it's quite steep. Uh, <laughs> right. I suggest you do what you want, but if you go lower, then the, because he had more than one, I think. So if you put it lower, then it might sell itself. And then it's going to, the, the collection is going to start to gain more value just the way it is for PFP projects. So, yeah. I mean, so it worked. It worked at the beginning and, and it's just like we're just starting. But I think that more artists should, should think, uh, should, should experiment with, with this uh, to think about uh, these these images, just like PFP project, where we need to have more volume in order to to gain value over time. Well, I think the Instagram NFT play will be very interesting in your world, and that as well, right? We we've heard the rumors that you know them being able to allow people to show off that they actually own the you know the ones that they're posting on Instagram. I can see that being a very interesting kind of subsection, right? And I even look at it. Like I, I, I know you mentioned about the additions being, you know, something that, you know, some are, are, it became trendy as of recently. You know, I'm curious, you know, one of the things that I've, you know, kind of walked through the process of like, I like in, in a weird way, like two of twos in the sense where there's only two rather than one of one. And in the, in the way of almost doing it where you have someone that is also kind of like shared that same like, hey, we both love this one piece of art allowing. So you're still like limited, but it also could even allow someone that says, I want to buy both of them myself, because whenever I find someone or I want to gift this to someone that I can gift them that one. And, mm -hmm. and you, you mentioned the flip shaming side. I think we, we just confused on like how are we're all making money in this game, right? Cause we, if we're flip shaming from the community perspective, but it's giving the art, the artists more money to work with, to be able to, to innovate because they're getting a percentage on sales. 
that comes across weird from an artist perspective. You're like, isn't it great when someone can buy it and sell it for more? It's actually giving more validation mm -hmm. for your work, right? I think we we have to get. I think we just. I think we have a crypto world that looks a lot of that when you know they would shame someone that would leave, you know, go from Doge to Shiba Inu. That was like the big, you know. And I think that kind of bled into this world. But I actually look at one of one collections. And, and even the edition collections as kind of leading the charge on this, like hopefully to more you know educate around like we shouldn't be flip shaming. We should also just understand that a lot of people don't even recognize, like don't realize like those things are kind of you know uh, innate in our in our uh, in our culture. The other thing that jumped out at me is like right now the PFP is just our individual profile photo, but just about every social site and website has a banner yeah, wrapped yeah. on every <laughs> single one, right? Like I, I laughed whenever I saw Twitter Blue rolled out with a PFP verification. I, I in full transparency, you know, Twitter's been one of my clients for a long time. I reached out to my rep at Twitter and I was like, why can't I have a verified banner photo? And he was like, I don't even think anyone brought that to our and I I like it but I hate it when someone's you like need, Brian, you need no you uh, on the board. <laughs> yeah, I was like they're like Brian, no one's ever no one suggested that before. And I was like, I know that you think that's a compliment. To me that's a frustration because it's like, well you probably didn't ask the right world. And like and so I look at like I even look at what you know the opportunity because I think probably for a lot of you know creatives or even influencers that are you know creating projects, they want to be able to work with you. So I as we kind of pull this together how do you look at like collaborations with other others in your exact space, other photographers, even maybe other one of uh, PFP projects? I'm sure just because, you know, for those that aren't, you know, aware just to qualify, I probably should have qualified it at the beginning, but I mean, the, the art stands for itself. I mean, you have, you know, well over, you know, 5 million likes uh, on, on TikTok with, you know, 300,000 followers over there. You have over, you know, 260,000 followers on IG. I mean, very active and engaged every time you're posting your, your community is, is there, I'm sure you're already getting inundated with like requests, but I, I, I'm going to guess, and I don't know this for a fact, probably a lot of them are just like, they don't even know what it would be like. Like in a way you almost have to lead it back and say like, this is what I'm looking for. So how are you guys looking at like collaboration opportunities? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've been thinking about that since the beginning of NFTs, because when we learn about the split mechanism, we're like, Oh, that's interesting because instead of, uh, uh, just paying the the artists we're working with, we can uh, onboard them into Web3 and have a, like a portion of the profits automatically sent to them. So uh, it was it was very exciting at the beginning, but it, it's not as easy as this because it, it, the split is not uh, available everywhere, and even the splits on foundation are not exactly what I uh, was looking for. But in the long run, I think this is going going to be it. Uh, so. You do a project, okay, and you have a creative team. You have like the the, the models or the dancers, uh, technicians, and you split the whole thing. You mint that, and when there's a sell, everyone gets their share. That's so exciting. Uh, so exciting. we're not there yet, but I'm I'm sure it, it's coming soon. Yeah, I, I love that side, Kim. From a, a a dancer collection, even from like the athlete view of like what you're providing. You know, like how would you, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that are in this space that look at what their creative is, is like, how does that translate digitally? And you have been doing that since the jump. How would you recommend people kind of like rethink how like, and it doesn't have to be just a, a dancer, but really a creative that can't right now see what their NFT value might be digitally. How would you recommend them kind of looking at this space? Wow. Um, I know I'm giving well, you the hard ones. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Well, for sure, like with curiosity and open mindedness, because there are so much to be done that hasn't been explored yet. I think the as far as the performing and dancing community is, we're very young. We're we're here. We're there. Right. <laughs> but uh, we need to onboard a lot of uh, new talents. And I think um, as far as dancers are concerned, there's always like the media, uh, like digital aspect of it, because our bodies are instruments. So unless you already uh, know like photography, videography, or you are already collaborating with uh, other talents, some other creatives, sometimes it can be a, bar a barrier. But at the same time, I think it's it's one of the main way to go. 
like to explore and and do collaborations with other people that are actually um, that have um, complementary talents um, because it's another media. Uh, dancing on stage and creating either a dance videos or uh, dance videos or dance photography or um, I don't know, like even 3D art. It's it's something different. So it it needs to be explore and i think it's always better to try to reach out for other people in the community that are, that are already there and probably want to collaborate so and i, and I tell you I, one of the other things that i love that because i think that is part of this right this is part of this is like we have to reimagine but we also have to recognize that like we we can find different ways to bring it and you know i'm gonna i, I believe almost every nft project that is built as a brand and business is going to have offline components and and even like how do we rethink an art activation when we have NFT owners that are that are arriving right like I've been to five or six now um, Web three events and it's very funny for me because we're taking like Web three ownership digital but we're walking into an art gallery that's just like an art gallery has been like since the beginning of time, probably, right? Just the idea of like art on walls. Yes, there's some digital displays, but for me, part of it also is like, how do we take the physical elements of even access? And like, if you're holding the, you know, the number five, you get access into, you know, our activation that we're collaborating with another, you know, project or another artist, or even kind of some of those, like, you know, if we're both at this event and there, there's so many different ways that I think we can bring, not only bring talents in, but also the NFT doesn't have to be just, you know, that aspect, right? It can be like this NFT unlocks this IRL intimate, you know, you know, I mean, recital and, and opportunity that you could not get unless you bought the collection firsthand. Like, I think there's so many things that you can uh, unlock there. Um, I, I mean, I, this is, might be one of my longer interviews cause I'm just loving, loved this entire conversation. Uh, I, and I'm so glad, you know, this is the beauty of, for those, you know, like you would listen to the podcast and it was like a, it was like a very, a, you know, beautiful synergy. I'm curious. So for those that are listening, tell us what, what is the collection right now that is not minted out? And then what is like, maybe give us a little hint on what's coming next or what they can look forward to. So right now we, we mainly have, uh, I'll say two collections. Our main collection is Night Reflection. Uh, which is our outdoor light painting art. Um, the primary sales are on Sloika and secondary sales on OpenSea. So it's a collection of 108 images and we divided it in chapters. So for us, like each chapter has its own, um, uh, what's the name, theme. Um, so that's our main, our biggest collection in our little baby. <laughs> and do you want to talk about the ref? And the other one is on uh, foundation. So we do uh, 360 work uh, using 176 cameras. And um, so we capture the dancers using this. And um, we do also long exposure. Sometimes it's just uh, about uh, freezing the, the dancer at the, the right position. So um, yeah, we've been doing that for a long time. And these are available. On foundation of course we keep creating not always uh with the minting in mind but of course this is something we keep keep thinking about so kim has a huge project coming coming on called can we announce that <laughs> oh, yeah, good. so uh, so kind of private but timeless yeah so we are working on a, a collection of art that is more like uh that it's my project so um, more body performance oriented uh, with photography and videography, but that, yeah, we're actively working on that. It's going to be released probably in the next months. Yeah. You see the alpha for the very, very end there. <laughs> wow. That's like bury the lead. I love that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because, you know, uh, for photography, the, the rights are always given to the photographer, like the copyrights and the, the rights of usage. And I wanted to fit the, the script on, on this one. She's going to own everything and uh, that's part of the uh, of this uh, project actually so uh, uh, i am slightly involved in capturing but that's yeah. her project that's something she she's been uh, talking about for uh, for a long time and i execute i'm here to like to press a button set the lights but ultimately this is her content uh, and she's going to be uh, the owner of uh, all of that mm -hmm. so well, a lot I, of exciting I, I, things 
it's super exciting. And I will say, you know, when that comes to life, you know, there's a couple other shows that we do the Alpha Mondays on Twitter Spaces, and uh, I'm actually just launching tonight. Will be night number one of our our solo of our Superpower Hour, where we're just gonna hopefully highlight and amplify you know amazing creatives that have superpowers. So the invite's open for when you know Kim, when you're bringing that to, that project to life. Love to have that conversation. I think this is a beautiful aspect as well, right? Each of you can collaborate and create together, but then you can also create you know, solo and those collab, you know, connect, uh, you know, those, each of those collections can kind of, uh, you know, brings, you know, worlds together as well. Uh, I love this. I, I mean, I, I, I would, you know, be remiss if I didn't say that I would love to, you know, I, I don't know if you guys are going to some of the upcoming events or, you know, there's, I mean, there's definitely a, a collaboration that I would love uh, to bring to life and, and, and highlight a lot of the things that, that you're doing. I laughed, you, you talked about how many cameras were your 360 and I'm using like literally a GoPro 360 as like my, like I'm like the, there's definitely the amateur capture side, but I, I, I love that, you know, that you kind of how you've created, I think so many people can learn from the fact that you've already been building in this space, but you also, I appreciate your honesty on the fact that you're now kind of almost having to build another Web3 native audience and hopefully, you know, bringing these worlds together. So, you know, thank you both very much. I, you know, really appreciate you having on the show. We'll make sure for those listening, you know, that we'll have everything kind of in uh, the show notes as well. And, and, you know, and I'll just say for those that are out there too, I think part of this for me is that like, I mean, when I think about like my work and even the things that I've done in marketing technology and digital, I, I've never looked at it for me to make, you know, big brands and the stock market more money. I've always looked at it and saying, like, how do we bring these worlds to life to allow people to do what they love? I think that's, you know, it, it was cliche. I don't think, unfortunately, our parents didn't even know that they could reinvent or reimagine a way of making money. And even for many of us that were, you know, Web 2 native and, and uh, you know, kind of uh, now getting stuck in the Web 3, like the, the future is going to be that when I look at my daughter's eyes, you know, light up at your work. For her, it's not going to be about like what's the job I can have. It's like what, where can I take you know my love and my passion, my desire for how I want to live, and bring that to life. And so, Kim and Eric, I really appreciate you coming on, sharing, and you guys are kind of living that. And it won't be the last for the audience that we'll hear from them. I I look forward to uh, collaborating and finding ways that we can uh, bring our worlds together as well. So, thank you so much. Thank you uh, for all of our listeners. Uh, as always. Uh, we will be back again tomorrow. So until tomorrow, make it a good one. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. You guys rock. Wow. <laughs>